Lameness in the flock will greatly reduce the output per yo and per hectare in any sheep flock enterprise. These are the two main driving factors in the profitability of a sheep enterprise. Lameness will also increase the workload in any flock if a proper control policy is not in place. The main causes of lameness uh, in any flock can be split into two different categories. Infectious causes, these are spread from sheep to sheep and are scald, foot rot and CODD, contagious ovine digital dermatitis. The non-infectious causes of lameness in sheep are toe abscesses, toe granuloma, shelly hoof and overgrown hooves. The first step in any control program should be to assess the level of lameness in any flock at any one given day in the year. To do this, you need to count the number of lame sheep in your flock on any given day. The next step is to set yourself a target to reduce the level of lameness to less than 5% in the flock in any one time. As Tom said out in the field, the first thing to establish is the level of lameness in the flock. And once you've that done, the next thing to establish is what's causing the lameness. Tom already mentioned that there's three infectious causes of lameness in sheep and they're scald, uh, foot rot and CODD. So if we look at this sheep here, you can see there's a little bit of reddening in the space between the two hoofs and this is scald. It's caused by bacteria and usually there's some damage to this, this skin here in the interdigital space and this allows the bacteria which is present in the soil to multiply and cause further damage to this area leading to reddening of the area. Foot rot frequently follows scald when you get infection with a second bacteria. Foot rot is a highly contagious sheep to sheep disease. It only survives for about 10 to 14 days off pasture. Foot rot itself, it causes um, underrunning of the horn at the base of the, of the sole of the foot and you also get a distinctive um, smell with foot rot. In a case like this, it's very important to treat the O early, okay, even if it's mild foot rot, to treat it early and to treat with antibiotics. Um, the best antibiotic to use is an injection of long-acting long oxytetracycline, and it's very important then to turn the DO out onto a uh, clean pasture. That's pasture that hasn't held sheep in the last 10 to 14 days. So there is a vaccine available against, against foot rot. Sheep never develop a natural resistance to the bacteria that cause foot rot. The vaccine contains 10 strains of the bacteria Dicylobacter nodosus and it does two things. It can be used to treat affected sheep but it can also be used as a preventative for the rest of the flock. Um, your veterinary practitioner will give you more advice on this product. Another infectious cause of lameness in sheep is cod. We don't have an example of cod here today but with cod it's a very infectious disease it's a sheep to sheep disease and it often gets into your flock by buying in an infected sheep. Cod is different to um, foot rot in that it starts here at the coronary band and it causes the entire hoof to, to shell off and indeed you can, the whole hoof capsule can come off. Um, but it's distinctive that you'd see it here at the top of the coronary band and it working its way down the hoof. The treatment for cod is very different to the treatment for scald and foot rot. It is very important to consult your veterinary practitioner on the best antibiotics to use in the foot bath for cod. Cod, once it enters a flock, can result in explosive outbreak of lameness, so it's very important to get it under control quickly. The last um, type of lameness that we need to cover is just a foot abscess. This is a non-infectious cause of lameness in sheep. Um, a foot abscess can be caused by trauma or some kind of an infection or a foreign body tracking up here at the white line, and usually you get swelling of this area of the hoof. Um, it tends to be warm to the touch, the sheep tends to be very lame um, and is usually carrying this foot and you may or may not see pus here at the coronary band when it starts to burst out. This is an example of a toe granuloma and toe granulomas are usually caused by over trimming of the hoof until the actual animal bleeds. Um, it's a non-infectious cause of foot rot and the best thing to do in, this, in the case where you get a granuloma is to cull the sheep. Here we can see another example of a toe granuloma. You can see the protrusion of tissue out here through the horn. This is quite a severe example. Um, the two options with this, if it's a very valuable sheep, you could consider um, using a pressure bandage and trying to treat it, but often this is unsuccessful. The, the best option with a yo like this, with a toe granuloma, is to cull her, because treatment tends to be unsuccessful. Um, toe granulomas can be caused by overpairing of a sheep's feet. Um, they can also be caused by trauma, and the other reason they can occur is sometimes in very severe cases of foot rot. We can see two problems on this hoof. Okay, so here you see an example of Shelley hoof and on the far side then you can see overgrown horn. The Shelley hoof 
as you can see here, is a non-infectious cause of lameness and the exact cause of it is unknown but it's thought to be due to either a nutritional imbalance or possibly some kind of damage from the environment. The overgrown horn here, we would advocate that the person pair this back and rebalance the hoof. Routine uh, foot uh, trimming should be avoided in most cases. Um, as already said by Catherine, uh, infectious diseases can be spread from sheep to sheep, from hoof to hoof. Um, and trials carried out in the UK, they found that sheep who, which were routinely trimmed had higher incidence of foot rot than those that weren't. So what we basically have here is a healthy hoof. Some farmers would be tempted to trim here, but in essence what they would be doing, if they trimmed this hoof first, they could be transferring the bacteria from, from this hoof to this one. So if you need to, to trim, you should be disinfecting your shear, shears between each hoof and between each yo, so the, the, the shears should be dipped and disinfectant. And then if you need to trim, uh, you trim it. But in general cases such as this, healthy hoofs shouldn't be trimmed. Routine foot bathing is crucial for the control of skull in the flock. First thing to do is to make up a 10 cent zinc sulfate solution in the foot bath. We do this by measuring the amount of, of water in the foot bath. And, and this foot bath behind us here, we have 120 litres of water. So to make up a 10% solution, we need 10 kilos, or it's 12 kilos of zinc sulphate. So we've, we've weighed out here uh, 12 kilos uh, of zinc sulphate, uh, and we have water. So we'll add the zinc sulphate uh, to the water in a bucket. We'll stir it up till it, it uh, dissolves. Then we'll pour it evenly into the foot bath. And we'll do that for the entire 12 kilos. One of the critical things in foot bath and sheep is foot contact with the solution. You can see here, Yo's walking through it. The total contact time is only four seconds. What needs to happen is you need to shut the front gate of the race and let the sheep stand in the solution and they need to stand in the solution for three to four minutes before they're passed out onto a clean concrete area. The mistake a lot of farmers make is that they have the hoofs clean, the sheep stand in the solution but then they go out to a muddy area. Now that the yos have stood in the bath for three to four minutes uh, we can let them out onto a clean concrete area where they will stand for an hour for the solution to dry into the hoof. We said at the onset our main aim was to keep the incidence of lameness in any flock down less than 5%. This may involve culling the chronic lame cases or sheep that do not respond to treatment. So for most farmers um, they have to concentrate on the breeding stock. Uh, after weaning is a good time to put in all yos, examine them, and uh, segregate out or isolate the yos that are lame. Uh, run the healthy yos through the foot bath, and they can, they can go out onto clean pasture. So what we've done here, we've uh, selected out the, the, the lame yos, and those yos, lame yos now will be treated intensively for the next week. Um, as Catherine said earlier, um, yos with foot rot, like these yos here have, they need to be treated with a, um, an oxytetracycline antibiotic. Uh, they'll be run through the foot bath for the next four or five days and given an injection, two to three injections over the next four to five days. Any yos that don't respond after the four to five days should be culled out of the flock. As Catherine said, uh, foot rot is an infectious disease. Those yos will spread the foot rot throughout the entire flock unless they're culled. So you have to cull those yos. And that's a priority to control lameness within your flock. All bought in sheep into the, into the flock should be examined for lameness, treated and ensure that they're healthy before they join the main flock. Prevention is always better than cure.